at you all the way from our dorm rooms to your conference rooms. Sabo Lee and Dan Tiemann here are two college students who are ready to talk to you guys about business and lifestyle from our personal experiences. Each week we'll discuss about our lifestyle as college students as well as our tips and strategies starting in the business field. We'll bring on successful entrepreneurs in the millennial generation to share with us their journey and how they got started and where they're at now. Our goal is to help you students, millennials, and entrepreneurs gain inspirational advice by our spontaneous conversations and meaningful guidance. Let's dive on in. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 20 of Dorm Rooms and Conference Rooms podcast. We have another special guest on here here for you today. Saba, how are you doing? Doing good. So excited for our guest today. He's going to bring us some great insight. So I'm just so excited. Yeah, guys, we have another amazing guest on. His name is Alex Hernandez, coming all the way out from Las Vegas, Nevada, to tell us what he does and how he got started with his company, Bookie Books. So, Alex, how are you doing today? You know, I'm doing great. It's Sunday. You know, I've had a pretty eventful day today, um, but it's I've been great. Everything's good. Yeah, Alex. So give us a little bit of background about who you are, what you have going on, and how you got started with everything. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Alex Hernandez. I'm 22 years old, and you know, I'm very simple. Uh, I'm I'm just like anyone else. I'm very just ordinary. I just have a passion for business, and um, I've been uh, on a journey uh, ever since you know early teens really and um uh you know to this point i've had my my fair shares of ups and downs in business and in life in general and uh, I, I feel like i'm learning something new every day so i'm just kind of a a student of life you could say and uh yeah you know i'm i'm good I, i'm really good life's good i have no complaints and uh I, i'm just grateful to kind of be here with you guys today and kind of um you know broaden my network and just kind of just kind of strengthen these relationships. So pretty excited. Awesome. That's great. So Alex, kind of take us back on where you actually started with your company. So you're selling college. So tell us like how you started your company. Yeah. 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 So I am in college still. Um, this is my fifth year. So hopefully no one here judges me that I'm still in school, but, um, you know, I'm going to school for uh, business admin and marketing, uh, nothing crazy. I'll probably honestly never use my degree, but you know, it's kind of funny. I, you know, I get a lot of people, we see it on YouTube. We see it from Gary Vaynerchuk. We see it from people like Grant Cardone and, um, they break it down for us and say, look, school might not be, it, it for sure isn't for everyone, but it might not be best for you financially or might be the best investment of your time at this important, this time of our life, I guess. But it comes down to, you know, just me uh, being t- like, if I quit school, I'm scared that it's going to like that tendency is going to kind of bleed into other areas of my life. Uh, so honestly, to this point, I haven't quit school or anything, even though I'm not going to use my degree uh, just because, you know, I, I just want to finish and I want to be the first person in my family to get a degree. And um, and, and I am learning stuff. I, I am networking with people. And I think that's kind of the most important thing about school. But, um, you know, I, I've had a couple companies in the past, a couple startups that um, haven't really gone the way I hope they've gone. And lately, my newest one is, is Bookie Books. So Bookie Books is an online book rental service uh, for all books, business, self-development, and entrepreneurship. It's very simple. It's very similar to what Netflix did with their DVDs back in, you know, mid-2000s, except I'm doing it with hard copy business books where, where members can sign up. They spend less money than they can just buying the book outright, and we send it to their door. Everything's kind of included in their membership, and they have an access of, of hundreds of business books. So uh, the cool thing is the books don't have to collect dust after they're done reading it. So, How did you get started on Bookie Books? Like, What made you come up with the idea, or like, how did everything get going for you? You know, I was, um, you know, I've always read books, and I think books are very valuable. I think learning is very valuable, but... You know, I was laying there in bed one night and, you know, I couldn't sleep. I was kind of tossing and turning. Anyways, it just hit me. I was like, you know, I never had the money to go buy books. I never had the resources financially. So I would go to like Barnes and Noble and I would read books and I would have to write down what page I was on before I left. And so I can go back the next day and and kind of finish on. And so I said, okay, if I'm going through this, you know, there has to be other people going through the same thing. 
So I, I, I came up with this idea where if I can create a service that economically can help someone in our situation um, where they can still have access to all these different books and resources. So um, I jumped out of bed. It was like literally it was like one in the morning. Uh, my girlfriend was like, dude, what's, what are you doing, Alex? You know, because I woke her up and uh, I told her, I was like, I have an idea. I, I just, I can't talk right now. I have an idea. So I ran to my office and I started just drawing on my whiteboard. Um, and I was up till probably like three in the morning that night, just kind of, you know, letting the ideas flow. And so that was December of 2015. And um, we launched in October of 2016. So it took me a little while. I went through kind of marketing or testing the market and seeing if people would even want this. Uh, and, and yeah, so this is kind of where we're at now. Just me trying to help other people or who are in the same situation as I'm in, really. That's awesome. That's awesome how you actually like acted on your idea that you have because I know a lot of people when they have idea, they just kind of think about it and they don't really do it. But I love how you actually acted on that idea. So Alex, how do you stay consistent with like you started your company and then obviously you're in college. So what do you do every day to stay consistent on this? Well, you know, I, I call it my daily disciplines. I, I read a few books in the, uh, a couple years back, Slide Edge. Uh, by Jeff Olson and the compound effect by um, Darren Hardy. And, you know, something that kind of was really apparent because those books are very similar in, in stature and, and kind of the contents of the book. But one thing I took from those is, okay, if, you know, if you do one thing every single day over a year, right, versus someone who doesn't do anything every single day, you're clearly going to have um, a drastic, I guess, difference in, in terms of, what the the outcome is right so even though it's very gradual you know and you can't really see it's very mundane typically um i just do one thing you know really one thing a day so anyways i came up with a technique called daily disciplines i have four to five things on there that i do every single day regardless of the day and those things are like you know listening to a podcast or uh, meeting someone new or reading 10 pages. So the little things that kind of can, can compound on themselves over time. So like I said, in a year or two years or three years, you really can start to, to reap the rewards of those actions. So that's really it. There's no secret. Um, I don't feel like doing them some days, you know, and uh, that's just really it. It's just one thing. I, I actually call it laying a brick. If you lay one brick each day, one day you have a wall. And in the hopes of one day having the Great Wall of China. So as long as you just keep laying bricks, just one day at a time, just lay it perfectly, and, and that's all you can really do. I actually have a uh, friend who does that too. He, he, I forget what he calls it, but he was always a football player, played football in college, and he writes down a list of, his, I think it's his power list is what he calls it, and it's five major things he wants to get done throughout the day. And he does it so it's like reading 10 pages in a book each night. And you'll put that down on his power list for 20 days until it becomes like a habit. So, you know, he puts it down until whenever he just does it automatically without thinking about it. And if he doesn't put do everything, he writes an L on it. And he goes, it drives him nuts when he puts an L on it because he's so used to winning that he hates to take the loss. Yeah, he's taking the L. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. And there's so many different variations of doing it, you know. Um, and, and the cool thing is they change over time. You you know, so as, as Bookie kind of, kind of came into flourishing, my daily disciplines have changed a little bit and they just are constantly changing. I think that's what's really important being an entrepreneur is learning how to adapt and adjusting your sales to whatever the conditions you're kind of going through at the time. Um, but as long as you have one variable of your life that's consistent, uh, I think you will eventually achieve the outcome. If you want to lose weight, obviously the first, your daily disciplines can be, okay, counting my calories and going to the gym and you know what I mean? maybe doing some yoga and eventually you're going to, you're going to see results. It's kind of the inevitable. Um, there's always an effect to an, or yeah, there's always effect to an, a cause. And, um, yeah, that's daily disciplines have, have seriously been the root of, of my foundation as an entrepreneur, but even as a person in general, um, with business aside. Definitely. Definitely. So going back to book you really quick. So how did you, okay. So you had the idea, you wrote everything out down on a whiteboard. How did you, like get all these books to ship out or are you keeping heavy inventory or talk about the business end of it all? How are you doing that? If somebody wants to start a subscription service of sorts, what, like, what are some steps that these should go through? You think? Well, I'm doing everything 
I do all fulfillment myself in house. It's different. If if I was if Bookie was I was actually like selling them a book. If this was kind of like a subscription box where every month they're getting a new book, I wouldn't do fulfillment myself. Most likely, I would figure out ways to um, kind of go out and, and see what th- third party platforms that I can utilize and can minimize some cost or overhead or or anything like that. Right now with me, it's a little unique because people return the book. You can return it in a day. You can return it in a month, in two months. And I, I tell people, look, read the book. Like if you can read a book or two in a month, imagine the amount of money you're saving in the long term, right? If you look at it like a yearly kind of basis. But, you know, if, if you were kind of to start is to write everything down, put it somewhere where you can visually see it, right? I know Pat Flynn, um, he wrote a book called Will It Fly? And he suggests actually writing sticky notes and kind of putting them up. And then you then you, you start to kind of put the, the pieces to the puzzle together. And you say, okay, what needs to kind of happen before this can happen, right? So what do I need to do before I go out and try to make a website? Okay, I need to first figure out how much my product's gonna cost me or, or anything like that. So I definitely tell people, you know, write it out, plan it out, and take action as soon as you can because I think some people get really caught up in that kind of stage of like, okay, I'm just planning, I'm planning, I'm planning. But while you're planning, you gotta figure out what's the first step, right? And the one thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan, they even talk about the domino effect. Like what's your one big domino that you need to knock down that's gonna kind of create a chain reaction of other things that will kind of fall in place. So I just tell people, look, write it out, get it out of your mind, because when it's on your mind, you start to kind of think like, first of all, you start to doubt yourself because you're like, oh, this, you get kind of overwhelmed. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the first step. Just write it out, figure out the logistics and just take action. Just do one little thing. It's crazy how if people just really kind of adopted that ideology, it's like, just do one little thing. Like you have 24 hours in the day. Just do one little thing that's going to take you 10 minutes. <laughs> if that's even calling a, a fulfillment company or, you know what I mean? So that's what I would recommend. Definitely. Yeah. That's what, I mean, definitely. I mean, Sava and I definitely took action doing our podcast and we've taken action throughout our, you know, our young entrepreneur careers doing different things. So say something like a website, did you build out the website yourself? Did you go to somebody else to do it? Did you outsource those things to, you know, is that not your strength or how do you deal with those problems that aren't really your strength? Do you go to a team of people or talk about that? Yeah, you, you actually hit the nail right on the head. Um, I can build websites. It's not my strength. And I didn't want to spend four or five months learning curves, figuring out what kind of uh, uh, plugins I need. You know, I, I, went, I found a company locally. I asked around. Um, I have some a network here of entrepreneurs that I kind of deal with. And so I said, hey, guys, who do you guys like? Who's the best around? So I went to them. I actually went and got in front of them. I, I, I set up a meeting, and I told them what I want to do. And, you know, they're like, look, we can do this. It's going to take us about four months, but we can do it. So I'll tell you guys, I spent five grand on my website and it was the best $5,000 I've ever spent because it would take out, if I didn't pay them to do it, I would still right now be working on the website most likely because there's a lot of moving parts. And so, um, I decided to do other things that I would, that are better suited for my skills or the time that I have, right? So uh, I definitely recommend, I mean, you hear, I don't have to even say it, but Gary Vaynerchuk says, and he preaches it, I mean, stick to your strengths, uh, stick to things that, you know, you're just really good at because, you know, I think we can learn. I could, you know, spend five months, six months, 10 months on building a website, but it's just not really conducive to what I'm trying to do. So I definitely, everything that I, I, I'm like, okay, I'm not that good at this, put it to the side, figure out someone who can do it. Um, and also, I think it also in in terms of the long game, long term, it kind of helps you or trains you to get good at delegating things and just understanding like you don't have to do everything to re- reach the desired outcome that you want. Yeah, definitely, that's a very true. Because if you're gonna focus on one thing, it should be your main strength. Otherwise, yeah, you are wasting time trying to do other stuff. But um, what are some speed bumps that you had to overcome throughout like all of this, throughout your journey of starting your company and stuff like that? Because I know in college, 
sometimes it gets a little hectic with classes and stuff. So what are some speed bumps or like some failures that you had to overcome and you learned from? Yeah, so last year, 2016 was a really interesting year. It's probably the most challenging year I've ever had as a human being. Um, and I tell you that because, you know, I was a personal trainer at the time, right? So I, was, I ran my own thing. I had my own little company where I, I trained out of a gym. I, I had my own clients. I was going to school. Um, I had this idea. I said, I need to go all in on this. Like, I, this is what I want to do. I'm going to go all in. Uh, I'm not doing anything else. Like, even to the point where I ditched all my clients. I said, guys, I'm done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys find another trainer, right? So I, I closed that down. And I actually went and got a job, a J-O-B, at a car at a car dealership, right? So I, I, the reason why I did that was I was like, okay, I need to figure out a way. Like, again, keep in mind, I don't have a ton of money. Like, guys, I'm broke. <laughs> I'm broke. I'm the, I'm the, the, the epitome of the college student. I, I am broke. I don't have money to go out and spend five grand on a website, you know? So I said, okay, what can I do right now? Uh, that's going to yield me the most money as fast as I can. I'm pretty good at selling stuff. So I was like, oh, I can't selling cars can't be that bad. Anyways, um, I was going to school. I started working full time at a car dealership, 10 hours a day, guys, 10 hours a day at a car dealership. Um, I failed two classes. I failed two classes. I got two A's and two F's. Um, so 2016 for school was actually not that good for me because even the next semester after that, I didn't even go. I took that semester off so I can, you know, recalibrate and figure some stuff out. But, um, you know, it was it was just it was challenging working that many hours doing something you hate, don't really enjoy doing, and no one else really understands why. But in my head, I'm like, okay, this I have a vision. I have to stick to this. Like, I need to go through hell right now, um, and and eventually there's gonna be another side. Like, there's I'm gonna reach the other side eventually. Um, so I quit the dealership in December, December 15th was my last day. And cause now I'm kind of going into phase two of bookie books, but to kind of provide some context, 2016, I was working 10 hours a day. I was sucking shit at school. Like I, I, no, I, I'm not the best student. I'm not the worst. student. I'm like very in the average. Right. And, um, so that kind of sucked to, to not be doing good at something, and then not really seeing the progress right away. Because, again, laying a brick one day at a time, it takes time to kind of really start to see how things are playing out. Um, but I'm grateful for for kind of what I've gone through. It definitely is going to stick with me for a long time. Just kind of failing school, taking a step back, and actually getting a job, kind of swallowing my ego because I was kind of the guy who's like, oh, I'm never going to go get a job. You know, I, I create businesses. I don't want to go get a job. But – you know, I think that was a turning point for me as well. Cause I'm like, well, if I'm, if I can start my company with this job, why not? You know? And, uh, so I quit, but yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the one thing that I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with is, you know, sometimes you just need to go get the job to get the money so you can keep doing what you need to do to move forward at the end of the day. I mean, just because you get a job now doesn't mean that you, you're going to have a job in a year from now. You know, it's just something you have to get, you know, you have to do in order to reach the next level. But I know you said earlier that you failed with a lot of other businesses. Let's hear some of those failures that you've been through or the other businesses that you've had. Yeah. So at a supplement company, it was, well, okay, we'll start with the, the personal training company first. I, I failed because I I kind of got sick of training in general. I kind of was in a rut. And my efforts of actually going out and getting more clients kind of went downhill really quick. And so um, I wasn't doing as good with training. That's kind of why I kind of took a step back and said, okay, well, I need to figure something out that I can do right now. But then I had a supplement company. Uh, with a really good friend of mine, we had a pre-workout powder that we handmade and hand formulated everything ourselves. We used it ourselves. We sold over, I mean, a couple hundred units out of our house, um, and it was called Fission Energy. It was, it was kind of, it was fun. It was a good project. Um, we, we had, we talked to a couple different investors. We had issues actually getting money uh, because it was going to take a while for that investor to to see the profits because we we're going to be investing so much back into it, but. Um, I, I decided he got in some trouble with the cops with his motorcycle. I we we're kind of just going different ways, you know. And so I said, look, I, I want to do something else that I can just do on my own. Um, I don't think doing business with a partner or with friends is is always bad, but um, you know, it's 
you know, I, I'd rather do it on my own, <laughs> to be to be honest. And then I also had a foam roller. And so I, you can see a theme. Everything was kind of in the fitness realm. But I had a foam roller, if you guys are familiar with those. And it was hollow on the inside and capped on the end. So you can carry it around like a gym bag. But it was your foam roller. So there's a ton of utility with it. And um, so I actually went out and got a patent for it. And we, yeah, yeah it was, patents are no fun. It was, it was kind of a headache. Um, we were going to kickstart it, but again, I was with another, someone else. So I had, so two companies there were with partners. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, things just didn't really work out for that one either. So then bookie books saw me and, uh, you know, it's actually, you know, it's doing pretty good. That's good. That's awesome. I love how like you did have those failures just so you could learn from them. So then finally, when you find that main thing that you can just run with it but Alex what's your like main why or a favorite quote that you really live by day to day hmm my favorite quote well there's I'm kind of funny I go through different mantras and quotes when like depend on like depending on what stage I am in and depending on what I'm doing and so lately it's too grateful to complain uh, and, and living in gratitude is really important. And that's actually one of my daily disciplines every day at two o'clock, a silent alarm goes off my phone and it says, what are five things you're grateful for to just kind of break up my day a little bit to give me five seconds, 10 seconds to just sit there and say, okay, just kind of reflect and say, this is what I'm grateful for. Like I have so much to be grateful for, regardless of how much money I have, regardless of any kind of circumstance, I'm grateful because I, you know, my family's healthy. I, you know, I, I live in America, like I have freedom, you know, and um, that's definitely probably one of my favorite quotes that I've been living by lately, uh, but they do change. They change depending on what I'm going through at the time. Um, I might hear something from people like Gary Vaynerchuk that I'm like, well, I really like that. I'll write it down and um, I'll put it in my phone and I'll stick to that for a couple of weeks and um, I kind of just jump around like that. But it's very, I think quotes are cool because they they have so much different kind of meanings like you can interpret them so differently um and so someone you know your guys's quotes or wise are completely different than what mine could be right so that's definitely the too grateful to complain it's awesome it's awesome so alex just kind of wrapping things up what are what's a major advice you have for college entrepreneurs who are just starting out just grinding away right now what is some major advice for them well, without just saying like the cliche, like, hey, just take action, execute, work your face off, things like that, um, my definitely is going to say to just keep your head down and stay focused. My biggest problem, I, I called it the, the entrepreneur quicksand. And as an entrepreneur, I love everything. I love business in general. It, it doesn't have to be like, yeah, I love books and I love reading and I love, love self-development. So I created a business around that. But I just love business and everything. I love, I love making money. I love, I love the whole idea of business and capitalism. But it's easy to get distracted, right? It's really easy to get distracted by the next, the shiny thing. Maybe it's drop shipping that this week is really popular. Well, Click funnels is really popular. I'm instead, to just keep your head down, regardless of what people are saying, regardless of what people are doing, regardless of what your family's saying, and to just, just. Do it. Stay on your path because it takes a long time and I'm still in the middle of it. I think I'm still in the really early stages, you know, and I'm expecting the next 10 years to just keep my head down, just work and, and just do your thing. So I definitely recommend that to people who are, who are early. Like we have, like, I think our, it's so funny. Our, our life is interesting, right? Because we have so much time, but on the flip side, we don't, we have so much time, like 10 years is a really long time to really just work your ass off, keep your head down, do your thing. But you also have to have the sense of urgency that are like, well, I'm going to die one day. Like I need to get my ass in gear now. So I think finding that balance between patience and, and being really urgent is important. But to just sum that up, just keep your head down and do your thing. Just keep doing your thing. And if, if you need to change directions, it's okay. You're not a failure because of it. Just, just keep your head down and just keep the wheels moving because uh, progress is better than none, right? Moving is better than not moving. Um, and just laying a brick is better than just sitting back and, and hanging out with your friends on Friday night. I love that. I love that. Yeah, that's like really great advice because I know even myself back in the day, I would just get so distracted 
by like other stuff that I'd be like drawn into but it is really about just staying focused on one thing but Alex you gave some really great insight on your company and your business and stuff so where can people find you at yeah, you, you can find me on Instagram at, at Alexander underscore H, or you can find me at Bookie Books is B-O-O-K-I-E-B-O-O-K-Z. Um, that's going to be the best best place to find me, but um, I really appreciate you guys having me on here, and and out of appreciation, anyone who is listening and they want to try Bookie Books for free, 30 days free, you know, do whatever you want, but um, you can use a code. It, it is, um, we'll just do dorm rooms. How's that? As a free 30-day trial. Cool, yeah. So dorm rooms, um, it ups, you know, sign up for the, the normal trial. You won't be charged. And, and just try it. Just read. I mean, you have none to lose. Um, but it's all because of you guys. So, I, Alex, I really appreciate um, just creating this relationship with you guys. And uh, hopefully we can kind of continue this. Definitely. We'll definitely be continuing that, Alex. And, guys, definitely check out Bookie Books. I recommend it. I've known Alex for a couple months now. Him and I have talked a lot, like, besides just this interview. But, you know, I've I've called Alex before while he was grinding away. You know, working out's obviously been a big factor. He literally FaceTimed me one day as he was walking on the treadmill so we could just get a conversation in through his busy day. But definitely check out Bookie Books. Get on that free trial, guys. Use it. Uh, use the promo code Dorm Rooms. And you could definitely, you know, see what it's all about. Get those books. Read. You always have to read. You always have to be learning. When you, you know, read a book by, you know, Napoleon Hill, you're getting mentored by him. But go to bookiebooks.com. Check it out. Use the promo code. You can find Saba at sabaali.com. You can find myself at danielteeman.com. Saba, any last words? Yeah, thank you so much, Alex, for coming on today. And guys, definitely check out Bookie Books. I love the concept of that. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to sign up for the free trial also <laughs> just to check it out. But thank you guys so much today on Dorm Rooms to Conference Rooms. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Dorm Rooms and Conference Rooms. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you haven't joined our accelerator program yet, you can find that at livedegrind.com forward slash college, where we connect you with today's latest influencers and experts in their fields.